Hey boys and girls, Doug Childs here. It's Warriors Rich. And wild man, what's happening, Doug? Hey, that uh, text you sent me the other day on uh, William Tyndale, and it was uh, the anniversary of his uh, martyrdom. So on October 6, 1536, Tyndale uh, was strangled and burned at the stake for translating the scriptures into English. Rich, for the common man, he was accused of heresy. Martin Luther said, I didn't come to know God until I became a heretic. So Tyndale's mm -hmm. uh, accused of heresy and given an opportunity to recant, but he used his last words to pray with this thing called a loud voice, Lord, open the king of England's eyes. Within four years of his death, several English translations of the Bible were published in England at the king's request, all based on Tyndale's work. And then at the end of this uh, text, you sent me, big dog, he says, if you have a Bible, read it, study it, memorize it, obey it, and cherish it. Many died in years past because they believe that common folks like you, Rich, and me, and our boys and wild men listeners, that they should have God's word in their hands and in their homes. You know, a lot of people, when they look at that book, when they ignore that book, when they, you know, um, treat that book like it's a... Uh, it's a gourmet uh, buffet line, and they can pick and choose whatever they want. Um, I don't think they know this kind of history that's behind this, uh, this number one world-class bestseller. Well, I, I think it's crazy because a lot of uh, American Protestants especially, uh, we don't have a lot of, of like heritage that we're taught or that we're aware of. And uh, Winky Prattney, who was a YWAM guy and youth minister, chemist, the guy who was a genius, he was actually writing a Bible. I need to look it up, not writing a Bible, but writing a commentary for a Bible. I need to look it up and see if he finished that. But uh, the whole idea of it was connecting us to our history and our heritage as believers, especially as Protestants, and it, and it obviously would include stuff like this because we're not just some people who have no history and heritage. We just don't know about it because we're not taught it. And uh, obviously, I, I mean, I know about Tyndale. I've heard about Tyndale. I read a little bit more to prepare for the podcast. You know, but those type of guys, they paved the way for like you were saying, and like it says here, things that we take for granted, people paid their life for. Like he gave his life so that you and I and everyone else can have a Bible to be able to read the Bible. And it wasn't the case before the 1500s. That just didn't happen. That, that's mind-blowing. I mean, not 15, 1530, 1529, whenever he did it, 1600s. So when you think about that, we, me, I can't speak for everybody. I, I get in the habit of thinking the way that it is. It's kind of always been like that. Maybe just an older version but in reality, that's not that long ago. People didn't have access to a Bible. Think about that. Hey, what does the Bible say? I don't know. What we're going to do is we're going to go down to the church. They're going to read some of it to us. Hopefully we know Latin. And that's what we got. That, that's, Doug, think about that. The first 1,500 years of the church, that's mind blowing that anyone was able to follow Jesus. Seriously, like, does that blow your mind? Yeah, again, you know, people in complete darkness, and um, it's like, well, you know, what did he just say? Oh, you don't know Latin? No, I don't. Okay, you're screwed. It, what he just said is, is that you're to obey the Pope in everything that the Pope tells you to do. Right. Want to get your, want to get your uncle out of uh, purgatory? Yeah, he was a drunk. A philanderer, a womanizer, somebody who imbibed deeply rich in the superfluity of naughtiness, then purchase Tetzel's indulgences. Does it say that in the scripture? It could, you know, but you don't know. We don't know. You poor rube. So you stare at that stained glass window of effeminate Jesus being cradled by the Virgin Mary. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what you get to know about God. And then you get cats like Tyndale and frickin' Luther. Showing up at the same time on the planet, brother. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine that? And here's what I here's what I love, Rich. Everybody's like, "Oh, it's so bad. 
you know, it's like, I guess it's the end of the world, Rich, and God's going to send a chariot to swing low and carry me off to Beulah land because it's never been this bad. So you got you got the Black Plague going Bro, down in Tyndale's. Not to, I need to interrupt you for a second, then you can oh. continue. Do you know how many people are saying that? It's so bad. Right. This surely is the end. Sorry, carry on. I, yeah. Yeah. They sound like they sound like Jim Morrison, you know, instead of the the Apostle Paul or John the Revelator. It's like, well, you know, so so anyway, um, everybody's like, it's so bad. It's the end of the world. Jesus is coming. Uh, it was bad when Tyndall was around. It was bad when Luther was around. It was bad when Calvin was around. You got freaking plague, second wave, death all over the place. You've got right. You've got the, the Catholic Church is in full jihad mode to anybody who's going to disagree and not bow and kip, kiss the Pope's ass and ring and everything else he would extend to us pull rubes in the flyover states. And um, boom, up comes the Reformation. And it coincides right. with the Gutenberg press. Shock of shocks. And it happened. And again, a, a, a crucible of, of conflict, of heresy, of wars and of plagues. And so I, you know, fast forward to today, it's like, well, what does that mean for us? I don't know. I don't think, I don't think the fat lady's ready to sing on this planet yet. I don't think she's fat and I don't think she's a lady. And uh, I don't think she's uh, taken any voice lessons yet. And this is the thing that, that Christians got to understand and they'd know it if they actually read the word of God. And you don't even have to go into the book of Revelation to get this. You just stay in Ephesians 1, 20 through 23 where it says that Christ has all power over all rulers, all dominions in heaven, on earth, every authority, every power. If you read it in the Amplified, it's like every Tom, Dick, and Harry, every leader you think is full of power, every political system that you think is this wrecking crane to that which is holy, just, and good. It's Paul says, uh, no, I'm sorry. When God raised Christ from the dead, he freaking got that power. No yeah, that's right. Marxist regime. No antichrist, antifreeze, antipasta, anti-M, none of them. Jesus and Jesus alone has that. Yeah, that's right. And uh, when we look at guys like William Tyndale, he made up his mind. These people need to have the scriptures. He wasn't concerned with, is this the end of time next week? Because that kind of thinking leads to futility. Right. This guy said, hey, people need the Bible so they can know the Lord. Like what an, incre what an incredibly obvious mandate to us in this time. But in his time, it, wasn't only ob it was only not obvious. It was a crime. He was put to death for that. And he knew that. He knew that. He escaped. He ran away from, from England. He ran away to Germany. And people were financing his translation and his work there because he had to do it. But he ended up getting caught anyway. But this guy, there's some crazy things. I looked up some stuff about him. You know, he was later betrayed and caught because of a friend who was in debt. Weird. Sounds like another story I know in the Bible. Um, he also influenced the King James Version. I like that, that his last words, you know, I guess when you're being martyred, you're probably more spiritual than I feel right now. Because my last words would probably not be fit for print or for a podcast. Not this guy. He prays, Lord, open the king's eyes. And what happens? The king comes under conviction and is compelled to authorize the translation of the scriptures into English. Bro, that's not even, that is not possible without the supernatural. That is not possible. You cannot be being killed and pray for the king to carry on your work. The same king that ordered that you're killed. You cannot pray that that king would carry on your work, but he surely did. Bro, to me, that's like miracle New Testament, blow your mind kind of stuff. Why aren't we being taught this stuff? Yeah, I wonder how many uh, uh, major, <clears throat> Rich, and I'm talking major, Christian Instagram influencers would pray for a similar calling like that. I mean, it's like, Lord, what's your will? It's like, okay, here's what's going to go down. 
you're gonna get you're gonna get martyred, um, but you get to translate you know the scripture, you know from the original language into the common man uh, to where they can read and understand the word of God. And um, I guarantee most people, most Christians would run from that calling. Yeah. That's and a, the amazing thing game, is that the king authorizes the translation of the New Testament of the entire Bible. Well, and Tyndale didn't do the whole Bible, but the New Testament. And most of the King James uh, Bible was based on Tyndale's work. Yeah, God gets a last laugh, man. Here's the kings, like, you know, you aren't going to do that by edict of my authority from on high. And then the next thing you know, he's printing Bibles. It's like uh, <laughs> like Voltaire uh, once said, you know, the Bible will be a relic only found in museums. And I think the Geneva Bo uh, Publishing Company turned his freaking house where he made that declaration into... <laughs> into it's a Bible a museum. Where they print Bibles, man. Yeah, it's a Bible museum now, too. You can go there and see the old Bibles. Here's an interesting thing. Um, I, I think we look more into the character and the nature of Tyndale when we read the, stuff like this. Um, he wrote about controversial topics, other controversial topics. He wrote books about topics like social inequality, inequity. He wrote about Martin Luther's ideas. And he also wrote about Henry VIII's divorce. This old boy was itching to get martyred. Yeah. He's like, a, that guy was like, I got some things to say. Well, they're going to kill you for it. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say them. <laughs> I mean, that, you want to talk about a man, that's a man of God right there that's like, it doesn't even matter. I'm going to say it. Yeah, and it goes back uh, to that old refrain that uh, balanced people don't change anything. God finds right. these... these weird guys and gals with these idiosyncratic eccentricities and um, that just got a freaking wild hair in them. They're heat-seeking, uh, truth-seeking missiles. And then, boom, you know, it's not a committee. It's not an elder board. Right. It's not a group, you know. It's not a movement. It's freaking one dude who uh, lights the planet on fire. And uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I had a... a friend of ours that, that we supported in missions for a long time, and I'd never met anybody like this cat, because, you know, we've, we supported missionaries, still do, uh, for, you know, ever since we became Christians. So this guy, I, I don't even know how I met him, but he went, he was uh, from Vancouver, so he goes to YWAM uh, in L.A. From, uh, from L.A. they go down uh, to south of uh, Guadalajara, state of Nayarit, and um, they kind of mill around the tail end of the Sierra Madre, passing out tracks. And then, then, then when, uh, when they did their mission trip, you know, for two weeks, it was time to go back, you know, and tell everybody what happened, raise some more money, damn it. And uh, Mike's like, you know, I'm staying. And they freaked out, Rich. They're like, you can't stay. He goes, yeah. He said, I think God's called me to stay. So he met some Wichol Indians and some Kora Indians who were down uh, from the mountains uh, in the little village, San Juan Baptiste, while they were, you know, evangelizing the Mexicans down there. And he, he became fascinated, you know, with these two Indian tribes. <clears throat> and so they, they were like putting their hands on their hips, puffing their chest out, telling him to get his ass on the bus and be a good missionary, you know, and... Uh, I don't know if they threatened him with arrest, but tell on him, you know, I don't know who they would tell on. So he stayed there, man. And he stayed there and we supported him for like 10 years. When he would show up back at our house, it would be at the weirdest times, like a year later, three years later, he'd have this funky, you know, we chill core Indian haircut wearing, you know, their clothing. And uh, he would go up there and when the rains would come, the rivers would swell in the mountains. And so they're cut off. For half a year to a year, you're there, baby. And uh, mm -hmm. they had a dream, and I'll shut up here in a second. They had a dream that a white man would come and show them, you know, the great spirit. Wow. Freaking Mike. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then catch this. So, so again, Mike's, uh, he's, he's a post-mill dude. He's a long-term thinker. He's not, let's just get them saved and have them wait on the rapture. He's like, they don't have a written language. 
They do have a language, but it's not written down yet. And he, with the Wycliffe Bible translators, and I don't know if he's still alive, could be dead. He just kind of disappeared, never heard of him. And he, he was nearly killed multiple times, mostly by Federales and not the Indians. But anyway, uh, they translate, they, they, they took their language and got it into written form, and then they began their work on doing chunks of the scripture. And I believe the first book that uh, they translated um, was Galatians. So that's, that's weird stuff. That's, uh, that, again, it's not your typical, you know, check boxes, punch that hole, missionary, you know, type things. Right. It's, it's Tyndale like, and Rich, I don't, you know, I was preaching to a bunch of young people the other day. It's like, can can one of you do something just absolutely outrageous? Can somebody uh, start a church in Ramadi? Yep. Somebody, you know, Tyndale did what he did. Mike did what he did. Other luminaries in the Scripture and post biblical history, they put their neck on the line, and um, yeah, and some of them got their head lopped off, but. What a great adventure. What a great story. Instead yeah. of like, I went to church for 40 years, and then I died laying on a bedpan seeing pink elephants. You know, it's like, ugh. Well, it's just like you said. The religious people tried to stop them. Get back on the bus. Tyndale, I'm sure all the religious people were trying to stop them. God doesn't want you to do that. You know, reasonable people don't change the world. They just reason with them. We need unreasonable people. I promise you from reading the notes and stuff I've read about this guy, he was unreasonable. When he had his mind made up and he decided he heard from God, you're not reasoning any with him, anything with him. And I would guess that he probably wasn't even nice about it. Um, I read a quote the other day, and I, I, Tyndale probably wouldn't have said this, but this is definitely a picture of his attitude. I'm going to say what I want until the day somebody beats my ass. Then I'm going to say what I want with a black eye. That's what reminds me of this guy. Like, I'm called to say this, and I'm going to yeah. say it till you try to stop me. Okay, we're trying to stop you. Well, I'm going to say it, beaten, a fugitive. I'm going to say it until you, you strangle me and burn me to death, and my last words are going to be a prayer. An audacious spirit-inspired Holy Ghost prayer for the king who ordered my execution to carry on my work. Come on, bro. That's a pipeline to heaven. Yeah. That's somebody who's like, the people need the word of God, and I believe it to the court. When your last words when you're dying are, please carry on the mandate from heaven, open the king's eyes. Let right. him get it. Bro, that's, that's why he needs to be celebrated. People need to know who he is. And what would he say? Don't celebrate me. Read the Bible. And like we said at the beginning, don't just leave your Bible laying there, man. People died for you to get that Bible in your own hands. In China, in some places, they give somebody one page of the Bible, and they have to memorize both sides of the page and then destroy it. And when they come to your page, you have to recite it word for word exactly because they can't risk having a Bible. And we have nine copies laying around plus our phones, and no. we don't read it. I'm not trying to guilt people like, you need to read your Bible. I'm telling you, it's so important that we have the word of God, that people were willing and are willing to die to get it into people's hands. And the devil is willing to kill people all over the world to keep it out of your hands. Please read your script, the scriptures. Please read your Bible. Get it in your heart. Get it in your mind. Start to speak it. Start to live it. Because it is one of the greatest weapons in the world. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's f definite fuel for uh, this thing called righteous rebellion. So when you're in a mm. whole you know, atmosphere of wokeism, politically correct, political correctness and stuff, dig into the scripture. Read what, you know, what would Jesus do? Well, he wouldn't do what most ministers are doing right now. And Rich, <laughs> I think I think we ought to lay on the, the guilt and the condemnation for people who blow off the word of God because we're, we're commanded uh, to love God with all of our minds. And if we're not in the scripture, I mean, freaking John Rich, Tucker Carlson, Russell Brand are pouring through the scripture, talking the scripture, 
mm-hmm. doing the scripture. And uh, what's funny, especially with Russell, when you hear him talk about the scripture, man, he gets bubbly, Rich. He yep. becomes effervescent. He sits with his legs crossed in a chair and he starts gesticulating about all the things that, you know, Christ has done in his life and how he changed him internally. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know what? Those were three former drunks. And if the church isn't going to say it, if the church isn't going to, you know, spearhead you know, on these issues from a biblical standpoint, then God's going to raise up three middle-aged drunks, former drunks, to do it. And, um, you know, in my book, Lionheart, hearted, uh, the second chapter is three musts for young men to move from being tinker pots to uh, biblical men is the scripture in 1 John 2, 14, where John says, I write to you, young men, because you're strong, and he met physically. He said, the word of God abides in you, and you've overcome the evil one. And so these young men, not mature men, not 60-year-old men that have nothing to do, we're sedentary, and all we do is sit and read the scripture. He said that these young dudes, and he's, the word there in John is teenagers, basically. He said, the word of God is abiding in you. And that's exactly you know, what Paul said, let the word of God abide in you rich, richly, is what Jesus said when he was attacked by Satan. You know, said he defended uh, himself offensively with great Holy Ghost biblical jujitsu skills by pouring the word of God out on the powers of darkness. So you get Christians nowadays, they don't read it. It's like, oh, I'll listen to it on tape. Okay, that's great. They don't do, uh, it's something. But man, the biblical ignorance, Rich, that I yep. see out there is flipping stunning. Evangelical. But, but he also prepared his mind. He prepared his life to be used by God. He graduated from Oxford. The guy knew he was fluent in English, French, Greek, Hebrew, German, Italian, Latin, and Spanish. He wasn't playing around. It wasn't like, God wants me to translate. I better learn Greek. It didn't happen like that. That's not real. You know, this guy translated the New Testament from Greek into English. He translated the Old Testament from Hebrew into English, bro. That sometimes it's like we just say that in a sentence and it's like he knew another language well enough to read it, to understand it, to understand the nuances and the culture enough to translate it into another language and confident enough to do it with scripture. Come on, bro. That's not like Hey, I think I'm going to do something cool for Jesus. That's a guy who was serious about preparing his life to be a weapon for God. You so know, and he would also hang out with heathens, with atheists. He would Lord. debate them. He liked it. He would sit and talk with them. I love that. Yeah, do you think if uh, they had Instagram back in his day, he would take a picture of him like in skimpy shorts or something like that? My guess is he probably wouldn't even have a phone. Yeah, you're but busy, being man. the genius, but think about this. Here's another perspective of that. Being the genius that he was, the cutting edge development of the printing press, he jumped all over that with the translation of the Bible immediately. And it was one of it was the first printed book, right? Wasn't the first page printed on the Gutenberg? Wasn't it the Bible? Has to be. I have to look that up. I, I might have made that up. Somebody fact check me on that. Not Pretty close. NBC. <laughs> Um, yeah, but you think about that. He was using the most cutting edge um, technology at the time to get the word of God out there. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it had been all over that stuff with the word of God blowing it up. Definitely not in short shorts, but. Yeah, know, so uh, uh, I, think it's, I think it's great. We've got uh, dudes like that, that, um, you know, it's, they didn't get swooped by a chariot of fire into heaven. They're, we can relate to cats like that. And, uh, you know, from a Christian standpoint, instead of, you don't want to emulate, I don't know, some Christian influencer on Instagram. It's like, you know what? I think I want to emulate that cat. I think I want to come at my Christianity. I think I want to come at this only one life that's going to be soon to pass. I think I want to go at it like this, you know? Yeah, so for sure. Or balls out, hammered down, you know, that kind of uh, faith, if you will. And uh, that's the kind of stuff that leaves marks. And uh, we're freaking talking about it. Uh, you know, 500, 600 years later, and it's uh, glorious. I thank God for, for my Bible. I thank God for all the, the tools that uh, 
I have at my disposal, and um, I ain't bragging, but and I know I'm a minister, but I don't neglect it. It's this is serious business. This, the work that Tyndall did, Luther did, and Calvin did created this thing called Western civilization. When they had the light of the Scripture start illuminating, you know, to again those poor rubes and the moors of Scotland and the caves and the bogs over there when those Presbyterians got a hold of uh, the work that Calvin and Luther did and John Knox, here comes this thing called America. And from yep. America and the freedom to worship who we want, when we want, where we want, uh, created this thing called benevolence that spread all over the planet for hundreds and hundreds of years. And that all translates back to Tyndall, Luther, Calvin, you know? Yep. Yeah, few people in the history of the church have impacted the church and the world like William Tyndale and translating the Bible into English. Amazing. Incredible. And uh, we need to look up stories of great men of God like that and be inspired and appreciate, like you said, the word of God that we have available to us today. Yeah. What a dude. I guarantee he's got an all-access laminate. He's hanging out with Paul and the boys you know, wherever that's cool. Wherever their, wherever their digs are. All right, Rich. Aside from uh, uh, following the example of William Tyndale, what else should the Warrior and Wild Men listener do, Big Dog? Go to warriorsandwildmen.com. Subscribe. It's free. We'll send you a couple emails a week. Let you know what's happening. Keep you posted, up to date. If you're getting something good from the podcast, hit the war chest. Your gift is tax deductible, and we will send you the information on that when you send your gift. For those that are doing it, we see you guys. You're making a difference. Warriors and Wildman, out.